Hello and welcome to the Everyone Has a Story podcast. I know I've talked about my one of my favorite pets of all time, Madison, my black lab. This dog was your typical black lab. It never met a stranger, but it also had the passion for being a retriever. So anytime that it had a chance for me to throw the ball or the bumper into the water, it was there. But then after a while, this passion led to more passion, which led to more passion. So anytime it was time for our walk or going to the river and throwing the bumper in, this dog led up even more passion each time. I didn't think this dog could ever show me more passion, but every time it did. And sometimes I'd come home from a long day at work. I go sit on the couch before you know it, I'm asleep. Somehow, some way, this dog had that watch on and it knew exactly when it was time for either the walk or for me to throw the bumper. And it would come up to me when I'm in a dead sleep, put its mouth right next to my ear and it would bark till I woke up, woke up and immediately had to go take care of my dog's needs. You know, and and to me, we can learn a lot. I've told us a lot of times we can all learn from a dog, especially a black lab, you know, especially today in the world of just getting over COVID, the great resignation, you name it. We need to have to have that connection again, that authentic connection to where we're not afraid to show our passion. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But we're going to talk about that passion, but we're going to talk about it with that authentic Italian flair. So I'm just going to give everybody a warning right now, because I don't want anybody to get hurt from listening to this podcast. If you're standing, you might sit down. If you're sitting down, you might put a seatbelt on because the energy level is going to change dramatically. I know me. I know what kind of energy le- energy level I bring. And it's nothing like what my guest speaker is going to talk about. Because we're going to talk about the importance of being authentic with your connection, with your just your energy. But you're also going to learn about how to put that little Italian flair to it to really see if that might help motivate you help motivate you and your team, help motivate you with your clients. But it's something that I think is very, very important that we need to just take a gander at. Because to me, since the first time I talked to my guest, I have been feeling a different level of energy. And I have to tell you that every time that I uh, that I try to get off of coffee, all I have to think about my conversation with my guest, and I don't need any more coffee because this woman will energize you with more caffeine than you'll ever, ever, ever imagine. So with that being said, we're going to talk about authentic Italian connections. And so let me introduce Ornello Fado. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. And how are you? What a presentation. Wow. Is that me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's you. And uh, and we're going to let you be you here in a minute here. But Ornello is really what's unique is she started her own TV t- channel, Brindamio. And I'm sure I'm not really saying that right. So I'm going to let her really say it in more of the Italian flair. But the 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 whole idea is that she wanted to connect the Italians abroad. And so she's never really left that culture. She's really, she knows who her audience is and she's focused on it in really in a unique way that we can all learn from. So without me really going any much deeper, because we all know that my Italian is not going to be as good as Ornella's Italian. Ornella, why don't you give us a little uh, more in-depth introduction to you? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Roger. Okay, so I'm Ornella Fado. I'm a native Italian, as you can hear from my accent. I moved in America 30 years ago. And yes, I still have an accent. (laughs) Well, the reason why I moved in America wasn't for the American dream. I actually was very happy in Italy. I had a career as a performer. I'm an ex-dancer, actress, a singer, and I worked uh, um, with the, the very best um, choreographer and director in Italy. So I put my bar very high and uh, I moved here because uh, uh, while I was doing a chorus line, a well-known American musical, I met uh, a special person that eventually will become uh, um, my future husband and the father of my daughter. 
So here I am, 26 years old, married to an American, living in a country, uh, and I couldn't speak any English, and I couldn't understand anyone <laughs> talking to me. So uh, let's say that it wasn't an easy, um, you know, a way of living if you cannot speak the language. But uh, of course, I, I didn't lose my hope in learning English. So I study, I learned thanks to my daughter. As you know, when you have a kid, it's much easier because you know you start with them from uh, nursery school to college and you grow with them. So my daughter now is a 29 years old. She's a teacher and she's, of course, is the love of my life. And, uh, um, you know, I wanted to do many things because of her. For example, how can I keep my language alive so she can speak the languages? And most of the time, as you know, solution comes from problems. So I couldn't find any good um, in Italian classes for my daughter. So I created one. I created an after school program called Dance and Music, where I was going to teach Italian through Italian songs to dance. And then my daughter started very much be involved in show business. And I realized that they were not a professional class for kids. So I created another project. It was called the Kids on Broadway. So kids like her that they were professional in the business could take a class professionally among the same age group instead of be in a class of adults or be in a class where the kids were not really serious about this business. So the third project was Brindiamo. Brindiamo in Italian means let's toast. So uh, I wanted to celebrate it to Italians abroad. Why? Because I realized Rai, which is the you know main public television in Italy, was broadcasting several hours of programming, but they were very uh, old, very um, they were not really about us abroad. So my goal was uh, creating a program for first Italian, first generation Italians, and uh, uh, talk about their success. And uh, um, I was, I think, smart enough to use food to do it. Now, imagine that uh, many years ago, when I started 17 years ago, there was no Instagram, no Facebook, no Yelp. There was no social media. So the only guide to know about restaurant was Zagat, as you remember. And the Zagat didn't really have a big personality. He was just a simple guide uh, with no pictures, just some suggestion. This is Italian, this is Chinese, this is French, and how much you were going to spend eventually, you know, with a little sign, dollars, dollar sign. And uh, Brindiamo instead was the first TV show that was going inside of a real restaurant, cooking with real chef that at the time they were not you know, TV celebrities as they are. And uh, they were real kitchen, means that they were not uh, ready to have cameras, uh, hostess, lighting, uh, photographers. They were simple, uh, you know, uh, cooking place. And so it was a very unique. And to me, because I don't come from, my background is not uh, food, but is a show business. To me, the most important thing was uh, talking to them because they were real Italian and they were really cooking for real clients. Again, they were show, uh, show like Lydia Bastianich that has been there for many, many years or uh, uh, Nick Stellino, which I have a huge respect, but they were a cooking show in a kitchen. Nobody will try their food Nobody will know if it's too salty. It's, I'm sure they were perfect, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> my guide, my show was a guide to tell people, hey, this is Italian. This is authentic. Behind this door, there is this chef with this, you know, uh, sous chef, and they were preparing a, a fantastic meal for you. It was basically a tour because I was going every day in a new restaurant. So you will have 
a new chef, a new recipe, a new location, a new atmosphere, and a new story, inspirational stories. Because many of them came maybe because they want to become an actor, and then they find the passion for cooking and they become chef. And so now this, uh, uh, the way that they can express it is almost like I'm an actor and I can cook. So, you know, it commanded that training as an actor. So, and that was the spirit of Brindiamo. Talk about Italian abroad and talk about their success. Obviously, I noticed another issues. When Italian celebrity comes to America, they don't have a platform to talk about them, to say, hey, I'm having a concert, you know, at the Carnegie Hall. So I find out that there would be something else that I could add as a special touch to my television show. And I, because my background is in show business and I worked with many personality. When they were coming to America, it was an opportunity to me to say, hey, why don't you come on my show? Maybe you can cook. Maybe I can come, you know, to watch your show and interview behind the scene. Anything goes. I mean, I did several interviews on the carriage on Central Park because maybe they never went on Central Park. So I, you know, took this opportunity to talk about them in New York while they were performing. So that means that Birindiamo become the first and only TV show that welcomes Italian celebrity in America. So um, you, we were talking about sometimes taking a chance in life during the COVID, because I remember I asked you, when did you start your podcast? And you said during COVID. So during COVID, I launched a project a brand channel, which is called the Brindiamo Channel, just like my television series. And that was a, a great opportunity. And we sometimes talk about the connection. I don't have a connection here because I came here, I was already 26. So I didn't go to college in America. I, you know, I, it was, I, it, my career was already done in Italy. I was starting a new one. But this connection that I made in London Probably six or seven years later come handy because uh, the woman that was in charge of uh, um, E1 Entertainment, a distribution company, and she wanted to carry my show, now become uh, the, uh, the person in charge to choose a brand channel in Italy for Samsung TV Plus. That, as you know now, you, you know, the, the smart TV figure out that uh, you don't need to just have a Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime, you can actually have uh, your own TV and you can uh, watch, uh, you know, unlimited uh, channels. So here I am in Italy with the Bloomberg channel, with uh, Chucky Gori, which is a big, uh, you know, movie um, company, and uh, a lot, a lot of big, famous names. And uh, Brindiamo Channel now has uh, carry mostly of my Italian, you know, uh, Brindiamo shows. Plus, uh, I start to inviting other producers that have a show with an Italian flair to come on board. And this has happened because I was sitting right at this table and I said, okay, I cannot film in restaurants. Restaurants are closed. Even when they open, we need to have a mask. I, I, I can't try food with a mask. I can't talk, you know, I don't want to show that people watch and they say, oh, that was COVID-2020. <laughs> you know? So I want to show that the people will say, it's always green, it's always happy. So I was sitting here and uh, I said, okay, I think I can do this. I open all my archive and I start to translate all my shows. I hire somebody to do closed captioning in Italian. And uh, thanks to COVID that gave me this time to just be sitting instead of running around to do something, I launched the first channel. And now, two years later, I have a Samsung T+. Plus. We are on LG. We are on Huawei. We are on Rakuten, and the latest project is uh, uh, Relax, which is a German app that launched worldwide. So um, you need to jump on opportunity and uh, take a chance uh, 
And if you don't take that chance, you may regret. I don't want to have any regret. Yeah. <clears throat> so obviously, I'm going to give you a chance to take a quick breath here because uh, uh, you're, you're going 100 miles an hour right. here, which well, I, knew you, I, I knew you <laughs> would be. So you, one thing that we can learn from you as business owners is that you knew who your market was, but you have a very sincere, authentic connection to your market. So what what is that connection? Why is that important to you in what you're trying to uh, develop with your TV channel? Well, um, you're right. I, I imagine who was my target. Of course, Italians, of course, Italians, Americans, of course, Americans. But I actually discovered that I had another interesting market, which was Afro-American. So, and uh, uh, I learned at this point that everybody loves Italian food. Everybody loves Italian uh, uh, lifestyle. So it was good to keep going in that direction. That's why a few years after the launch of Brindiamo here in America, I started to film shows from Italy because at this point I could bring the real Italian flavor here in America. So um, from my audience, I learned that if you are passionate, they love you. Because, uh, you know, have the authentic enthusiasm. I am the same person on camera and off camera. And I noticed that people actually tell me exactly that things every time they meet me. Said, oh my God, you are just like you are on camera. At the point that the people don't know why they know me. I was just for one of these project of committees. I told you I was elected to be one of the representatives for the Italian community in the tri-state. And so we were with the president of the committees in New Jersey. And this lady started, oh, what do I know you? Uh, do you teach my daughter? And I said, no. And then he said, oh, yeah, maybe we go to the same hairdressers. And I said, no. Eventually, <laughs> Alessandro said, you're watching her show. Oh my God, that's so true. So she was in a way embarrassed because she was talking to me like, you know, she knows me. We do the hair every Friday, you know. And then she felt bad because actually she never met me. But that was the beauty because she really thought I was her friend. I really like yeah. to have a connection. When I film, I, of course, watch, you know, talk with my um, chef or restaurateur or my guest. But I also talk with my audience. I turn, you know, my head and say, okay, now I'm going to tell you why this is a good place to be and have a good pizza. So I try to create this connection so people feel very comfortable when they meet me to talk to me. And then I like to listen, what is the aspect of Brindiamo? Because as I said, I do, I'm not coming from a food uh, uh, tradition. Actually, as a dancer, we were not even eating. <laughs> I always say it, but you know, it wasn't like a big deal for us. But I wanted to create a show that can be interesting for, uh, um, sorry, I have a phone call. I'm just uh, decline. Okay. And uh, I was, uh, people can relate it because they like how I dress. And a lot of people, I say, oh, what show was that? You were wearing a yellow dress. I say, okay, that helps. <laughs> but means that how, what are you wearing? It was important. And yeah. if you love food, you are interested in the recipe, but maybe you're interested in the success of the restaurateur that left, you know, his own country to come here and then open his own restaurant. And maybe, you know, he didn't even expect all this success. So you look and say, oh, wow, so I can be successful too. Look at him. He doesn't even speak English, you know. So there is a many reasons. And a lot of times it has to do with the memory. I remind the people how the grandmother was talking, how the aunt is talking, story that they heard that they never seen it. So there is more than one reason to watch Brindiamo. And sometimes it's just, uh, why not? You know, it's colorful and uh, it's a happy show. So <clears throat> here... I see a lot of business owners, I see a lot of leaders in the business community. They talk about connections, 
but really it's never more than surface level. You know, they 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 don't really pick out all those details like the yellow dress and all this kind of stuff, but they they really talk about how they're good at connecting, but they can't remember any of the details. So this is a nice you know, what do you say? Because you see, I do have a special connection with all my chef and restaurateurs. I wouldn't do differently. I told you a few days ago that uh, when I call, because maybe I want to feature that chef and the restaurant, and then let me say, oh, let's uh, talk with the PR. And then the PR, let me see if you can talk at the third person. I said, I'm not interested. I want to have a real connection with the chef. If he doesn't have the time to have a real connection with me, it means that the day that we are going to filming is me pretending to be a nice guy, which probably he is. And then as soon as the camera is off, he's gone and he doesn't even say goodbye to me. And that's not what I want because my spirit was connected with the people. And so when I go to my restaurateurs, they know who I am. I know who they are. And I remember their birthday. They remember my birthday. And, you know, there is a real connection. And that's absolutely essential. I wouldn't do it without. So so what are the benefits from, from having these authentic connections and having that little more energetic flair to these connections because right now you can walk into a lot of businesses throughout the world, but I'm here in the United States. <clears throat> they, they, you walk in and you can feel the tension. You know, you can, you can just, you can just feel that, that people there are not real happy. And so how is having authentic connections going to help eliminate and reduce that that tension that is felt right when you walk in the door? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, you need to do things that you love. And uh, be authentic to yourself, uh, to be truthful your, to yourself. Uh, uh, you know, it's the most important things. If you start a business that you don't love, how can other people love it? I mean, uh, you know, they, they are not going to trust if you don't do things with the passion. If you do things that don't matter to you, why would they matter to them? So that's what I said. Every time I do something, it matters to me. It was important to me to have a class where my daughter could learn Italian through dance and music. And I was lucky enough that mattered to other people the same things that I did. So the idea of the show business class was because my daughter was in a Benetton commercial. And I saw this very energetic hip hop dancer. And uh, I see how he was uh, connecting with these kids. They were like eight, nine years old. And I said, you know what? I'm going to hire him to teach these kids. And uh, it was a great idea because, uh, you know, like my daughter needed to have a trainer from people that knows how to treat the kids in a professional way. There were tons of kids on Broadway that needed the same things. So I created and I was teaching a tip tap. I was teaching, you know, hip hop. So they were teaching hip hop. And so anything that matters to you eventually matters to somebody else. My show at the beginning, actually, I'm going to tell you something interesting. I heard the people say, why would somebody will like a show about food and restaurants? And now we can just laugh on a jo a, 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 something like that, right? Because there is a thousands of shows about the food and restaurants. And 17 years ago, there was none. So people will think uh, uh, it's not interesting because there is none. Instead, it, to me, was interesting because I could, my mission was maybe eliminate a stereotype about Italians. We are not all mafiosi just because we left Italy, you know. There's a lot of good people that work hard to become successful. And my goal was, uh, you know, to talk about them. So, and uh, let's not forget my, uh, you know, opportunity to take back my dream to become a TV hostess again here in America, which, by the way, I didn't wait for anybody to offer me this opportunity. 
I needed to create it. That's another thing that I would suggest to people. Don't expect that somebody will give you something. It may never happen. <laughs> if I was waiting for somebody to give me, uh, you know, the possibility to be a TV hostess, probably I would never be. So I had to create my way to become who I want to be. So my little ego in doing a show that makes me happy so I can make other people happy, it worked in a way. And, uh, you know, the connection, so the, the real benefit is if you're happy, your crew, your team is happy, and they boost uh, you confidence uh, because you have uh, their trust. The client trusts you. I never had a restaurateur that said, before you broadcast, I want to see what are you doing. Never. And I did over 100 shows. And when people ask me, oh, they trust you? I look at them and say, why wouldn't they trust me? It was like, it would be normal for me that they trust me because I never had somebody say, please, before you broadcast, I want to see what you're saying. Never an issue. So that boosts the confidence. Okay. So this is, this is great. So tell me, if you were to coach me or other business leaders and team leaders on really how to up their game when it comes to being authentic with their connections and putting a little bit more flair to it than just being a corporate robot. You know, what advice would you give us today on how we could start moving forward down that path of being maybe not 100% fully Italian authentically, but, uh, <laughs> but have a little bit more. Authentic. <laughs> there you go. Have, having a little bit of flair, but really being more authentically connected. Um, I'm telling you something that my uh, program director on NYC Life told me at the very beginning. He said, you know, Ornella, you cannot make everybody happy. So just, you know, sometimes we tend to try to see what's trendy. I didn't know it would be trendy, my show. You know, you, you don't know. You just have to do it. So she said... Make yourself happy. There will be people that like, for sure they're going to appreciate your hard work, and the people that don't. But at least you are happy, you have the right energy. So I will say to people, first of all, to try things. If you don't know the challenge, you will never know if you really want to keep doing this for 17 years. And uh, um, trust yourself. And of course, be prepared that you need to be a professional in any things that you do. Even when you do a smoothie, you need to know how to make it. So anything that you do need, need to be done with the right criteria, like respect for the work, discipline. It is something that uh, my dancer taught me. Um, be a dancer required a tons of discipline, you know, going every day to dance class, being a certain way, um, and that you can apply to anything. I feel that what's lacking right now with the younger generation is this discipline because they think that everything comes easy because we have a cell phone and we can do a show in, uh, you know, with an iPhone, which if you are very very good, probably you can, but the fact that you have an instrument doesn't mean that you have the capability to use it in the right way. So be truthful to yourself, not just doing it for money. My daughter will laugh and I will say, of course not, mom, right? Just <laughs> do it for the passion. But what I mean that money will come and the, the fact that I've been here for 17 years, it means that with a struggle, which sometimes I know is going to be a struggle. You know, sometimes I have a client that is very difficult and I know. So I call my friends and my team. I say, it's going to be very challenging, but ultimately to be happy because I know that I can do a good show. So it's like a delivery a baby. We know that it's painful, but then they give you the baby. You're so happy. <laughs> so, um, so I think people should take a chance of themselves. Like I said before, don't wait for somebody to give you an opportunity. Go and find your opportunity. Find your passion and follow your dreams with uh, 
you know, really with professionalism, if it's a word, the professionalism, <laughs> but you know what I mean, you know, be a pro in anything you do. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, sharing you with us. I mean, this has been really a, a very insightful, but very enjoyable conversation. <clears throat> I guess I'd call it a conversation. I don't think I got too many words in there after the opening part, but you know what? This was about you and being authentically Italian. So you know what? I uh, I have no problems sitting back here. So Ornella, I know you have a lot of passion. I know you have a lot of <clears throat> energy and you have some good, good business sense. So give the audience one more, just final words of inspiration on how to wake up every day and take the world on authentically as opposed to trying to be someone that's going to conform to what everybody else is doing and not really being themselves. Yeah. Well, the trick, like you said, is being you. You have to be happy with who you are. That's very important. You know, sometimes people say, don't you want to color, change your color or hair? Change, And I said, no, I actually like how I look. So if we can learn how to love it, you know, ourself and respect what we do. That's why it's important to do what you love. Otherwise, waking up every morning, thinking to go and do something that you hate. Anyway, you put the same energy to do something good towards something bad. Just let's do the good one. And Roger, I really want to thank you because um, it's true that today I spoke a lot, but in the days that we've been connecting, I felt that true connection with you. So you didn't just give me some questions and then say goodbye. I'll see you, you know, uh, in a week. We really spoke. You really know when you did the presentation, she's full energy. You knew. You didn't just imagine how I could be, you know, on this podcast. So you are a truly authentic connector. You, you know, connected with me and you inspire me to tell you all these wonderful things that I did in my life. So I want to tell, you know, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful job that you've been doing with your podcast. Well, and you're very welcome. And thank you for those nice words. But you know what? You, you said something very important that we should wake up and just be us. But somehow, some way in our life, I can't tell you what age and what happens, but we forget who we are because we feel like we have to be conforming to the either the corporate world or whatever world that we choose as a profession. And all of a sudden we lose sight of who we are because we think we have to act a certain way. So how would you help someone get out of, break that glass and no longer, not no longer, but reduce how much you are trying to be just that, that business professional corporate conforming individual and have a little bit of you back at your authentic you back added to that? Well, listen, probably because uh... I'm working for myself. I have a freedom to be myself. Probably, like you said, the corporate company will give you the way of being and acting. And uh, as you, I was telling you, people like the way that I dress because I'm not afraid to put jeans one day, mini skirt or long, because I don't have anybody, any producer tell me, you always have to wear this look. You have to say every 10 words that you have a, a daughter because people want to know that you're a mother, that you have a husband even if you don't. <laughs> you know. So I, I remember when I divorced, a lot of people say, when you get married? And I said, why do I bother anybody to be single? You know, and uh, tomorrow is actually my 10th anniversary with, uh, you know, my uh, new man. And I've been so happy we're not married. I don't feel the need. And thank God I don't have anybody say, you have to get married. You have to get married. And uh, I just live in the way that I want to live. I live a love in the way that is without, uh, you know, uh, following certain steps that oh, you are over 50. Now you have to get married again. So. 
I think the corporate sometimes is giving you a line how you have to what to wear, how you have to talk. If you can just bring a little bit of you, a little you know charm, a little flair of who you are. Every, we are not robot, you know. So everybody can apply something personal to their job, even if it's a corporate. Um, I think that maybe is the secret. Do not be afraid to add your charm. It's always said the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is the little extra. So add that extra to your day and you will be extraordinary. Nice. Well, I can't thank you enough again. And if someone wants to reach out to you just to feel your energy, share your energy, <laughs> Or, or learn more from you, how can they get in contact with you? Well, I do have my Instagram account, uh, Ornella Fado, or the Brindiamo channel. They can watch my show on 2B TV, it's Brindiamo. I have uh, all my shows, actually, from the second season, I think, uh, on Zumo TV, which is, uh, you know, is a great uh, uh, platform. Um, also, we are on Amazon. If you are in the tri-state, you can watch me every Sunday at one thirty on NYC Life, which is my home uh, channel. I've been there on October. It's going to be 17 years of broadcasting. And uh, in Italy, if you go, I'm uh, all over the <laughs> linear streaming channel on Samsung, on LG, and so on. So, and really... My email is on my website, so I will be happy to share and to listen and to talk. As you know, I love to talk. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no kidding, right? So <laughs> I, I, I know that everybody now that's listening to this podcast is probably wondering this very one important question that I have to ask you. And this is coming from all the listeners. How many cups of coffee do you drink in a day? <laughs> Oh my goodness, do you know that I actually don't drink a coffee? There is, I don't drink coffee and everybody joked to me, can you imagine Ornella with uh, a, an espresso? <laughs> <laughs> and even though my show is called Brindiamo, I'm not even a big drinker. So this is very, you know, funny, but I, I toast it to life, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know and, and that's the beauty of you is that uh, you can come across very authentic with so much passion, so much energy, and you don't need anything else to help you get that other than just you being you. So that's what we need to take away from that, that we don't need those that caffeine or whatever to think that we need that to make us us. It's just us being us. So thank you. And that's really the most important thing. So thank, thank you again for being my guest. Thank you so much. And of course, brindiamo to you and to all fantastic audience. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Right>. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao. My podcast wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for my sponsors and my uh, great supporters. So let me take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them. First of all, I want to thank Rebecca at Custom Bookkeeping and Accounting, delivering trustworthy bookkeeping services since 2003. Dave and Dara at Virtues Matter, making this world a much happier place to be with their Virtues card app, coaching and workshops. Stephen at Buller Accounting, giving business owners depth and insight to their numbers. Eric and his team at Ivy Cat Web Design, the real superheroes of web development and design. Jennifer and Jean at the Seavers Real Estate Team, serving Pierce and Kitsap counties with their home buying and selling needs. Mori at the Mori Method, the world's only brainwave and trainment engineer, helping everyone have more clarity, less stress, and overall better brain health. Priya at Pivot My Profit, helping individuals and businesses have better control of their finances and more money at the end of their day. Melissa at the Soul Vibe Energy High, the queen of the aha moments, helping individuals find those holes in their cups, repair the hole, and gain back their positive energy. And finally, Rick at West Sound Recording, you talk, they do all the rest. Thank you, Rick, for all your efforts with the production and editing of my podcast.